This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today it's gonna be raining coins. We are all coin collectors trying to find the nice old ones, the cool new ones, ones of different sets. Because today we're gonna be blind auctioning for coins and through a deck building element, but called a bag building element. This is Coin Quest. It's brought to us through RR Games in North America. It's for two to five players. Let me show you how it's played. I'll see you on the other side. In Coin Quest, each player gets a cool color shield with a very nice velvet matching bag. Over the course of the game, you're going to be buying new coins that you're collecting and then using them later to try to win other auctions. Essentially, this is an auction game, so three coins from this black bag will randomly be placed out each round to right here. This is lot one, two, and three. Down here, you'll be bidding on points, three points, two points, and with four or five players, two points. Certain places, you can't use certain coins. So when you're bidding on this one, you can't use gold. You can't use gold or silver here. You can't use silver here. Here are market coins that I'll talk about in just a moment, but right now we're gonna be bidding on these different spots. Now each player from their bag will draw five coins. It's gonna have coins of their color. You're then gonna flip them over and see what you've got here. Now these are bronze and these ones are silver and you're hoping to get gold and buy more gold as the game goes on. So what you're gonna do is you can put as many coins as you want in each of the lots. You don't have to bid on every one. So maybe I really want the one that's in lot one. So maybe I'll put like, uh, I'll put a two silver there. And maybe I also really want the three extra points. I'll put the sil this silver here. And maybe I'll put a silver and a bronze in a lot too and then what the heck let's just put this here you can bid it any way you want you don't have to bid on all of them you can just bid on the ones you want and you can put as many coins you want there once everyone's done we will open up our shields and resolve it by the way on the back of the player shield it actually has some of the special actions that are on each of the coins that we'll go over later so starting with lot one everyone would you know look where their lot one is and say you know what they have everyone can see everybody's eyes coins at that point and we see who wins how it works is whoever placed the most gold in their lot one on their board would win so if one player had placed a gold one another player had placed a silver another player had placed a bronze five the gold would win even though there's more silver than gold gold wins however if this place player had placed also a gold one these two players would tie for gold and the next tiebreaker is who did the most silver this player played a silver, this player did not. This player wins. They would take this coin, they'd put it in a discard pile next to them, along with the coins that they used to bid. If you actually, if you win, you leave it on your lot for now. Everyone else takes the coins that they've bid, they put them in their own respective discard piles. You would do that for each of these. These coins, if nobody wins, it's a tie or nobody bids on it, this coin stays and then next round there'll be an additional coin here. You'd also do that for points. When you win points, you just go right up on this marker. One thing I wish they would have done in this is made the board a little bit bigger because when there's even more than one player and there's lots of ties in this game, they don't really fit here very well. So after you've done all the lots, Anybody that sells coins basically had, had won that lot. You start with whoever won lot one, and they get a chance to buy in the market, and then you go to lot two, three, four, five, six, in that order, and everybody can buy one coin from the market. Now to buy a coin from the market, you essentially spend three prestige, which is three points. You go down three points, take any one of these coins, add it to your discard pile, which you'll get to later. These coins never get replaced. Now everyone starts with 10 coins in the bag. So second round, you'll have another five, but that will empty your bag. Here we have a discard. So after the second round, all these coins that are in your discard pile, if you never can draw five coins, you always put everything in your discard pile back in your bag. It's kind of like a deck building game, but a bag building game where you're getting coins and you're taking them. Now some coins have things on the left side. And if so, when you draw these out of the bag, you'll get an action. This allows me to draw another coin out of there. Sometimes you can draw two. If it has this on there, you get to trash, which means get rid of a coin uh, completely out of the game. And that thins your, your coins out. You can get rid of the ones that don't matter so the better ones come back sooner. Some of them just give you points every time you get one of the, every time you pull it out. Other coins have things on the right side and those are for end game bonuses. Uh, there's a crown, a, a sculpture, and then there's some points. And there's also a variant I'll show you in the end with some other coins. The game continues like that until this loading bag is completely empty 
uh, and then that's going to be the last round, and then you go to final scoring. So at the end, you empty your bag, and you look at all the ones that have coins on the right side. And there's going to be some additional scoring. Here, I'll get two points at the end just for this. Then we have some set collection. We have the king, the queen, and the special variant, the Essen tiles. Those three different logos you're collecting over the game. You count up who has the most of each of these, and you get different points depending on what place you're in. For example, for the king, if you're in first place, you'll get nine, second is five, third is two. The queen is seven, four, and two, and the SN ones are the same as the queen, seven, four, and two. You add those points up. If you tie, you both, uh, all the tie players get that, and then you remove the next place. So like if there are two people tied for first, they'd both get seven. Nobody would get second. The next person would get third place. Friendly ties there. Uh, whoever has the most points at the end is the winner. All right, there's coin quest. Now up front, I just want to say that I am not a fan of deck builders. In fact, I own like one game that has deck building, I think. It's Baseball Highlight 2045, and it's not even like a standard type of a deck builder. I just, for some reason, that mechanic, that mechanism doesn't really sit well with me in a lot of games. Although the newer games that have been coming out that I use it as an element here and there, I tend to like. Uh, but in general, it's not one that like a whole game of deck building I've, I've almost never liked. And it, this is kind of like that because it's a bag builder, but essentially it's a deck builder, and it has that blind auction. And I gotta say, this game is really good. Uh, it, it is a fantastic 30 minute game. Uh, you got those blind auctions and you're trying to figure out, well, what are they gonna put? What am I gonna put? Which ones do I really wanna go for? Which ones will I spill my gold on? And do I wanna back it up with some silver? And it's really cool because you're getting these coins or you're bidding for points, then you're using those points to buy those other cool coins that are out there. Are you going for the sets? Are you trying to get the king or the queen or the essence sets? Or are you just going to try to get ones with cool actions where you can shed off and discard a bunch of your coins or draw more coins or get, get immediate points every time you draw it from your bag? It basically takes the deck building idea and streamlines it and strips it down to its absolute most functional aspects of I'm drawing five. If there's nothing left, I'm filling it with my discard. I'm buying new coins, which gives me my discard. I can get rid of cards. I can get points. I mean, you're buying points or coins, and that's it. So it's super streamlined, and I love that about it. The blind auctioning is really fun. Um, if you don't like blind auctioning, you might not like this game. I do, so I really like it. Um, however, I will say, you know, so it, all in all, the game's excellent. It, it feels about the right length. Uh, it scales well with different players. Of course, auction games always, in my opinion, play better with three or more. Uh, it works with two, but it's going to shine with three or more. Um, but it's really fun and easy. And it's a blast. It's, if you like deck building at all, this is like the best like intro to deck building you can ever pull out with anybody because it's a ton of fun. Uh, there's no, uh, there's not a lot of actions that you got to remember. Not a lot, no text to read on cards. It's just, it's super simple, and everything's on the, the player aids. So overall, I absolutely love it. The negative, the only negatives I would say is number one, the scoreboard was not big enough. You can't even fit more than one of the meeples on each spot, and often you're tied in this game. I just wish they would have made that board a little bigger or made the spots bigger for those. Uh, so that's a negative from the production side of things. The other thing is, uh, during the beginning, if you get outbid a bunch of times, and there's times where you could get nothing in a round. Um, I got nothing on like the second round of the last game we played. One of the other players, I think went two or three rounds where just everyone just happened to just barely bid them out. And he got nothing and it really slowed down his entire game and we were buying other coins and getting other stuff and he could never really catch up. So I really wish there was some sort of catch up where if you didn't get you know, anything that round, you get to draw six coins instead of five or something like that to help because it really kills you when you don't get anything and it can happen in this game. So those are the only negatives, but overall the game, I really love it. And it's such a good, unique game there. Uh, I'm gonna be keeping it in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. <laughs> This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.